morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this week's Tips and Tricks webinar. Today's topic is an overview of IoT Discovery and IoT Protect. Uh, please use the Q&A chat if you have any questions. We'll make sure we answer those during the webinar. Uh, our presenter today is an SE from Pennsylvania, Keith Wilsey. Keith, take it away. Morning, everyone. Keith Wilsey here. I am uh, SE in Strategic Accounts, and I also participate as a virtual team in IoT, specifically in Medicare. Uh, uh, not Medicare, uh, medical uh, and healthcare. Uh, prior to my life here at Checkpoint, which I've been here three years, I was a working engineer and manager uh, for a large healthcare system. So I've just about configured, built, and designed every aspect of healthcare environments. With that said, I'm going to jump right into IoT discovery and protect. I got some slides here. I'll talk briefly about uh, time permitting. I'll go into a little bit of a demo how to create an IoT discovery controller, how to see those devices in our third party partners, and how to build that IoT protect layer within your gateways and deploy it from your management servers. Without further ado, here we go. As everybody knows, everything today, the age of things, everything you touch from traffic cameras to you know Amazon Fire TVs, thermostats, smart buildings, everything is connected in a borderless world. And these devices are constantly being probed, hacked, and attacked. You know, and the device count continues to grow day after day, week after week. You know, as you can see, our cities are fully integrated. Everything talks to everything. And as I said, you know, they're constantly exploited. You know, and the problem is with IoT devices is they're invisible. They're accessed from everywhere, anywhere, whether it's a tablet, phone, PC, coffee shop, whatever it be. You know, as we all, as we all hear these terrible things, anonymous and being hacked, all these devices have no built-in security. You know, obviously I can read every line from the slide, but you know, I'll let you read that. And the worst thing you want to hear, you know, is is these words right here. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. You know, it's it's all too often, you know, uh, ransomware, anonymous, you know, taking control of these devices and moving laterally throughout networks, stealing data, putting it on a dark web. You know, and that's the thing, you know, manipulation, you know, how do we, you know, discover these devices in your own environment? If you don't have some type of discovery to build risk, you'll never know they're there. And if you don't know they're there, you've already been breached in most cases. You know, as I said, they're unmanaged, they're invisible. You know, they're constantly being adding to the network in a healthcare environment, whether it's biomed facilities, whether it's, you know, an infinite abduction system in a maternity ward. And most people don't know it, but your doors within uh, maternity wards have direct connections to state police. If they're propped open, they're notified, they will be there. I can tell you from firsthand experience of doing that, building out network closets. You know, so here we are today with Checkpoint IoT Protect. You know, we protect the environment and create prevention to stop these threats without the visibility and the integration of our third party partners, it is not possible. But today that is, you know, that is a working, breathing, living, you know, uh, technology we can use in our portfolio of products. And with that being said, I'm gonna dive right in here. You know, there are three comprehensive pillars. You know, as I said before, discovery is key. You cannot protect to prevent what you cannot see. From that, you're going to build a risk analysis policy and continually build upon that. And you know, not only IoT, you know, any network uh, security prevention or protection, you know, has a methodology to it. And, and we use these pillars, whether it's IoT or any type of network environment. You know, and here and right here in from our management console, you know, here is an IoT layer. And as you can see, you know, uh, these IoT layers are built dynamically from different tags and stuff where in the past uh, you had to know the source, the destination, the ports, the protocols. We learn this from our third party partners and we can make smart decisions and protect and prevent these threats 
from invading your environments. And as I said here, you'll see a source there. And, and that source, that manufacturer is a specific tag. You know, the, the beauty of this is when you use a tag, if Biomed brings in a new device, whether it's a C-arm, uh, you know, CT scanner, wherever it be, if the manufacturer tag is Siemens, you're already protected because you're learning this from our third-party partners. That tag is part of the imported intelligence that we get from them. And, and on top of that, you know, we can use our blades to enhance these protections because of the application protocols that we already know from our intelligence. And, you know, again, with security, it, it's not, you know, a north-south uh, protection anymore. You know, there's east and west and how you deploy these gateways and enforce this and learn the discovery of your environment, you know, it, it behooves you to, to have east-west visibility. In a traditional, you know, layer three network, you have action, access, distribution, core. Once you have visibility into these different layers, you can prevent these attacks at the edge closest to these devices, which is, you know, recommended by best practice design. You know, and, and the key here is, and one of the things I want you to take away is, you cannot patch your IoT devices. They're late to the game. They're inherently insecure. Security wasn't, you know, it wasn't built with security in mind. They're legacy uh, OSs. They're building usernames and passwords. And a quick Google search will show up a lot of these things that, you know, hey, what's the default password and username to APC? APC, APC. Didn't take much talent there. And then you load up a Kaylee Linux box and, you know, enumerate, exploit, and, and so forth. You know, we see it time and time again. You know, so this is where, you know, uh, virtual patching comes into play. You know, it's all about prevention. With our threat cloud and our IPS, we can take these inherently insecure devices and we can apply virtual patching in, in, in a means of IPS where we can block that threat based on the signature we have without patching the device. And the vendors will never patch them in most cases. If they do, it's already too late. Here's a perfect example of a, a vulnerable uh, DVR device with this protection in the CV uh, score right there in a reference. You know, we're able to apply this uh, with IPS protections to stop the threat. You know, and this is all too sad of a question. Is it already exposed? Once you notice that it's too late, these threat actors have been in your environment for months. They've moved laterally, they've taken control, they've built back doors and continually to evade and go deeper and steal information. So that's where, you know, it's key prevention, 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 prevention. You know, with that said, I went a little bit fast on them slides. I like to dig into some of the, you know, technical details. But, you know, by all means, take us up on an IoT security checkup service. This is eye-opening. You know, with our third-party partners, we can discover these devices, these invisible devices that nobody knows about, whether it's a temp track device. And what that is, is it's basically a serial to IP device. It's more than likely sitting in a ceiling in a medication dispensing room because it, your facilities and your healthcare environment have to maintain, you know, refrigerator temperatures. These medications require specific guidelines as far as the control of their temperatures. You know, and our common theme here, once again, you know, let's block these threats in real time. Let's consolidate access, clouds, users, this borderless world and, and use prevention, you know, and, uh, and, you know, we are the trusted uh, industry experts, you know, so. So with that said, I'm gonna dive right in unless anyone has any questions as I flew through them slides prior to moving on to the next section. No, we're good for now, Keith, keep going. All right, perfect. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you the, uh, the IoT controller. So basically everyone's familiar with our uh, smart console. 
you know, it's, you know, it's as easy as coming in here saying new, you're going to create a new controller, IoT controller. And this is simple to do. To save time, I'm going to copy and paste from my notepad here. the wrong line highlight. And what I'm doing right now is I'm building this IoT controller to one of our third party partners, in this case, to mitigate. As I said earlier in the presentation, you know, my background is, you know, extensively in healthcare, so I have the knowledge and institutional knowledge and medical device manufacturing knowledge. What we do here is we're going to test this connection. Now that it's connected, you know, we've built that integration. You know, we're going to come down here and we're going to apply it to, to the gateway. And we're going to come in here and we're going to apply it to his policy. So this IoT layer is going to go to the standard policy and click OK. You know, it was that easy to add the IoT controller. Now I'm going to publish this. I'm going to make a commit here. I'm not pushing, I'm just making commit. Now that I have that third party integration, now I can learn all this intelligence that they've discovered for me throughout my network. And as you can see here, it's updating in the IoT layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to it and I'm going to import all this intelligence into my smart console. And as you'll see, it's, it's gathering that data. And it, if you haven't noticed, it created that IoT layer up there on the left under access control. You'll see it right here. In here is where we have the intelligence. And this is where we can filter based on you know, whether it's a device, a manufacturer, as I stated earlier, when you're building these policies. And uh, if you want to come down here and filter, you know, you can do these different cloud service device, the directory and so forth, and uh, tags. Come down here if you want to say, you know, manufacturer. Who do I want to, who do I want to set my tag for? And in here, you know, obviously you have all these different these are all healthcare, they're called modalities, medical devices, whether it's Abbott, Alaris, Capsule, G, whoever it be, you know, uh, you can come down here and you can select one of these. And you can build your policies in your IoT layer based on this information that you've learned. You would just select it and go here. And obviously I've done that. Close this out and I'm gonna publish this. Once again, I'm committing it. And now here's where the fun comes. So now this is the intelligence and as you'll see, this source or destination is based on a tag. It is not based on a traditional source and destination. And that's where you can build upon this once you have your environment set up correctly in terms of what you're filtering and what you're tagging, whether it be a new Siemens device, whether it be a new Alaris device and so forth. This is where all this you know, intelligence comes into play. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? Yeah. Um, those tags there, are they created by Medigate, Checkpoint, or? Uh... They are created by Medigate or whatever third party you choose that we support, whether it be uh, Armis, Medigate, and uh, odor or any of the other third-party discovery engines. Are they, uh, can you create your own or modify them in any way? Or is it, or would there be any reason to? Well, I would not recommend doing that. There would be no reason to because the intelligence is coming from the third party. You know, and there's other ways that you can send things and protect things from the third party that I'll show you. You can control the policies and the intelligence that you're learning from them. 
I know you just rattled off a list there, but I got a question. Uh, you know, what third party partners does Checkpoint work with, or is there, uh, you know, any, or is it a, a certain list? We we have a certain list which is right on our products page under IoT security. The one I'm focusing on today is Medigate, and I'll show you different interfaces of Armis as well. Uh, I focus on Medigate specifically because of my healthcare background, right. but we have a whole list that we do support. And I could share that from the IoT Protect page. Yep. Okay. We're good for now, Keith. So the, uh, as I'm going to dive right into to the Medigate interface. So this is the third-party Medigate, their UI. In here, you're going to see a whole bunch of information. And uh, with any of the third-party discovery, partners. You know, the intelligence comes when they sit passively in your network. Uh, everybody's familiar with the, the concepts of taps when they are strategically placed. Uh, I would recommend it a distribution layer where you can see everything that is passing your network. And depending on how complex your network is, you know, you, you may, may require additional infrastructure, passive devices to see them. So typically, if you have a multi, you know, uh, hospital healthcare system, you know, it would make sense at a distribution layer at each hospital to look at that passive traffic and to be closer to the edge, put that protect engine, uh, our gateways out there, protect that east-west at that location. And then, you know, in your data centers at distribution, you know, place it there. That'll control your north-south. And at the hospital, you're controlling the east-west. It gives you the ability to build that zero segmentation. So right from this screen here, you're going to see that, you know, there's a whole bunch of devices. You know, you can drill down on any one of these. So you know, once again, medical devices, you know, I'm, I'm going to scroll down. One of the most complex things in hospitals is a lot of the devices are legacy. They are serial. They were never meant to live in an IP world. So what uh, vendors have done is they bolted on terminal servers. It's a common practice, whether it's a glucometer, you know, or a blood gas analyzer, they all have serial to IP. And you never know where these devices are, but you know, you can come down here and obviously these are the different methods of connectivity, whether it be ethernet, a gateway serial, wireless. I'm gonna focus on serial, you know, I just collected the wrong one. So here, you know, from our partners, you're going to see here a, a plethora of information. Not only is this valuable to, to uh, IT, this broadens the depth of knowledge in a cohesive way through IT with your biomed, your CISOs. There is no more, well, what's this device? We know it. We know the protocols. We know how it's connected. We can see it's tripped typical traffic patterns. So if I just click on this here, you're going to see a whole plethora of information. And this is not only, you know, important to you know, your network engineers, your security engineers. There's a whole lot of information for Biomed as far as do you need material daily safety sheets? The information is there. Is there a risk? Where is the CVE? It'll point you right to this device. You know, you can get down into risk. Here's, there's vulnerabilities. You know, what is the risk? It is right here. And you can actually do risk simulators. You know, and if you're very vigilant how you build your environments, you can get the location of these devices. You know, most people don't know where the devices are. And a lot of times it falls on a network group. Hey, where's this device at? And so forth. You know, what's the network connectivity? And there it shows you, there's the ethernet connection to the uh, terminal server, serial to ethernet. You know, typical hours, when is this device running? And so forth and so forth and so forth. So now I'm gonna get in here, you know, the intelligence that we learned is here. These are recommended policies that our third party partners will recommend based on the knowledge that it has and the risk of these devices. And then you have your organization policies. And to follow up with you, uh, Rob, this is where we tell it which policies we want to send to our management console. 
and in that management console, what kind of intelligent decisions do we want to make for prevention? Obviously, the last thing we want to do is block a device that needs to communicate because it can impact medical you know, care, if you will. And if you look in here, I mean, there was 27 rules that were sent in there. And, and these are protocols. DICOM is very popular in healthcare. Um, every medical imaging device, whether you get an MRI, CT scan, x-ray, they're going to a radiologist uh, you know, pack system or a workstation. And then you got interfaces that'll send a radiology work list to tell what to read and so forth. You know, not, not that this is a checkpoint thing, but one of the most powerful things that, you know, from our third party partners is the ability to stop a threat outside of a gateway closest to the edge, if need be. For example, if you had a DDoS occurring on a network from a medical VLAN or whatever, and if you use good hygiene creating your VLANs, voice, data, video at the access layer and isolating medical device VLANs to just that. Don't place PCs, printers, and medical devices in the same VLAN. What you can do to that is, you know, if you have a typical Cisco network and you need to, to stop this threat immediately, you can take this ACL, whether it's a, a wireless controller, which is a WLC, or a wired switch with, very, with no knowledge of how to create ACLs on a Cisco switch. That is power to stop the threat at the edge. So enough about uh, Medigate. I, if there's any questions here, I can dig into the different aspects of Medigate, but I'd like to show you some of our other partners interfaces. Yeah, actually a question under those organizational policies, are they created by Medigate or do you create those? You create those. And the, the, I, sorry, go ahead. No, the, these are the recommended policies and then the organization policies. These are the ones that you create. So I see the policy rules there and then over there it says export the firewall. So what is it actually exporting? Does it actually create the rules in the policy? It is creates the rules and the policies that, that you seen over here. It is creating these in the IoT layer. And can they be, and then you have to publish them or are they enforced? You, uh, they're not enforced until you actually install the policy. Okay. You know, we can publish them, commit them to the database, but once we install that policy to whatever gateway is applicable for that policy, it is then applied. Got it. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And, and as you'll see here, I mean, there's different uh, uh, things that you can do. One of the other things, too, is I'll go into here, you know, system settings. Uh, everybody in their environment has a bunch of, you know, whether it's info blocks, whoever it be, Cisco, ICE, our third-party vendors, they get the intelligence from all these other devices that they can send to us. So that intelligence it, it has so much value in guarding your environment and protecting and preventing. You know, there's a whole, like I said, Cisco, ICE, whether it be Aruba, so forth, and obviously other, uh, you know, manufacturers. But uh, I'm going to come here and I'm going to show you another interface here. So Armus is another one of our vendors a third-party discovery engine. It's a common theme. It's all about, you know, I cannot protect to prevent what I cannot see. And, and as all of our third-party products, you know, we have this inventory, these assets, what lives in my world, what lives on my wire, what lives in the wireless network and so forth. And then we can come down here and as you'll see that, you know, whether virtual machines, PLCs, personal computers, controllers, and fusion pumps, and fusion pumps are always wireless and we're experiencing an error, which is great, but uh, that's by design. <laughs> So infusion pumps are a high risk and they've always been for years. And you know, the onerous is always on the network guys to protect these on your WLCs, which is very difficult. But now with you know the power of IoT Protect and the discovery engines, that you know, we no longer need to go the extra mile to integrate Cisco Prime, WLC controllers to build the prevention and security. 
and, you know, nursing units, you know, everything's about how do you build your environment? You know, where is the location and, you know, how is it built out? And obviously here's our little wireless and it's connected to this WLC. I can tell you in my prior life, Biomed had no idea where infusion pumps were. And we had to use uh, you know, WSC, if anyone's familiar with that. And we had to use location tracking because what happens is there's an inventory asset overuse from a leasing perspective that saves big money in organizations and goes a long way for funding for further prevention, protection, and asset discovery. What I'm going to do now is, uh, you know, uh, here's another one of our vendors here. It was Clarity, which is actually the OT side now that they have acquired uh, Medigate. If I remember the password. In an OT environment, it's totally different protocols. You've got cicada and stuff like that. You know, this is, you know, for example, you know, factories, car manufacturers, and all this stuff. This is this could take two days to explain in itself. So I'm just going to give you a, a, a quick overview of the interface. You know, your assets. Obviously, you can't protect what you can't see. So assets are key. So now the one thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a quick video for you. One minute since we're coming up on uh, the half hour here, which is about a minute long, but uh, very good information. IoT devices have found their way into all aspects of our working lives. Devices such as smart TVs, IP cameras, and medical devices are regularly used by organizations. However, connecting these devices to your network exposes you to new threats. A lot of IoT devices run on unpatched software, are misconfigured, or use unsecured communication protocols. Organizations also own device inventories of multiple vendors, models, and functionalities. Finally, many unmanaged devices are connected to the network without anyone's knowledge. While IoT environments have become increasingly complex, IoT security solutions have remained far behind with limited visibility and control over IoT devices. This increases the risk of a successful cyber attack where critical devices can be damaged manipulated, or used to infect other systems on the network. And as the number of associated devices rises, it's becoming more important than ever to have a strong security around IoT. For more information about IoT, read our white papers on CyberTalk. Well, that concludes a demo in, on IoT discovery and protect. If anyone has any questions or requires you know, additional information, by all means. Yep, we have some questions here. Um, is it possible to use this uh, Armis discovery on Quantum Spark devices? Quantum Spark is the small business aspect of our gateways. Yes. And what we have for that is a, a different solution, which is EA today, where we, we leverage, you know, our infinity portal and build IoT discovery and control through an infinity portal. It's meant for North South IoT, IT devices only. You cannot leverage the Armis from the quantum spark perspective due to the policies that are built for only IOT, IT classification. Okay, uh, this one, I'm just gonna read this one verbatim, it's a little long. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to have a firewall in each VLAN, but you can use the switch ACL to block traffic, but that would be a manual process. It sounds like you can integrate Cisco controllers to automatically block at the switch. 
It's always depth in defense. You always want to block a threat the closest to the edge. You don't need to have firewalls in each VLAN. I would not recommend that. Uh, would you, unless you, you know you're, you had a requirement to do that. But as I was saying earlier, in a typical uh, environment, uh, it, Cisco speaking, you know where you have access, distribution, and a core. So from the layer three boundary, you would place um, a, a firewall interface as the layer three hop out of that network and control traffic that way. But let's just say that was a distribution. So you have a hospital with 12 floors. You know, obviously all 12 floors are gonna have a whole bunch of devices. If you had a new threat that, you know, you wanted to stop at that layer three closet on the 12th floor, you could take that ACL that was created for you and place that right within that layer three edge switch to stop the threat on that local VLAN before it had a chance to enumerate and go beyond that layer three boundary. Great. Um, but then again, you would not have visibility uh, from a switches ACL unless somebody was sitting there at the command line. You wouldn't have the CVE scores. You wouldn't have the risk scores. You wouldn't see the threats like you would see from our third party partners as we learn that intelligence. Uh, the discovery itself is that, you know, instant like when a new device is put on the network is there like a scheduled uh, discovery uh, of the network from the first packet to the, when it's configured in your infrastructure when you're passively monitoring traffic from the first packet that leaves that device our third-party products and vendors will see that device identify it classify it and tag it as we spoke earlier about the tag so if it's a new scenes device you are protected from our gateways once that tag is classified. So if it seems, so that new Siemens device falls under that category of that tag. Got it. So in that scenario, if it was to, to traverse north, south or east, west, depending on where you had your gateway enforcements, it would protect that asset. Okay, I think that covers it unless anybody has anything else here. Um... Thank you, Keith. Great information. You know, I was, I was in healthcare before Checkpoint myself, so I feel your pain in these dis devices. Um, this is leaps and bounds above what we had to deal with back in the day. I just put everything behind a firewall and hoped and prayed. So this is a much, much better solution. Um, I, I did. And, you know, in healthcare, the sad thing is, you know, the answer is always, well, security is just a hurdle. You know, we need to add this device. Well, unfortunately, a lot of times you, you made risk analysis without true information. Right. And it's, it's all about, like you said, knowing what's on your network. Most of the time stuff gets added. Nobody asks. It just gets an IP and then it's on there and you're vulnerable. So that discovery is paramount. So thanks, Keith. Appreciate the info. Uh, we'll send a follow-up email with any reference content and the recording link. Our next webinar will be in two weeks. You'll see an invitation for that soon. But with that, uh, we'll let you get back to your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Keith. And we'll Thanks see you so here much. next time. Have a great day. And by all means, if you have questions, comments, concerns, like Rob said, reach out. We're glad to help. Great. Thank you, Keith. Thanks. Bye, everyone. <laughs>